read one other one. Second Samuel. So, page, a couple hundred pages from there. Joshua judges Ruth versus Second Samuel, first and second Kings. Second Samuel five. We'll read one through five. Okay? Second Samuel five, one through five. Would somebody read those verses? And all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Look, we are your bone and flesh. For some time while Saul was king over us, it was you who led, up, led out Israel and brought it in. The Lord said to you, It is you who shall be shepherd of my people Israel, you who shall be ruler over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king of Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord and they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. At Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and at Jerusalem he reigned over Israel and Judah 33 years. Okay. So David, David is one of those key people from the Bible. Tell me some things you know about David. He started out as a shepherd. Started out as a shepherd, good. What else? Killed Goliath. He killed Goliath? Committed adultery. Committed adultery? Yes. We remember that part. What else? What else about David? Well, he was a king that did well and didn't do so well. Yeah. Really? He did well and didn't do so well, but yet the he Bible keeps saying he was, a, he was a man after God's own heart. Yeah. So whatever that means, he had a heart for God. And it showed up in his life. I mean, Saul had a heart for God too, I think, but Saul didn't have quite the heart that David did for whatever reason. I sometimes feel sorry for Saul, so I, I tend to I tend to feel bad for the guy. But but yet, you know, he made his own choices too. Yeah. David was the first the, the first king over uh, all the. Or I should say, he wasn't the first king, but he was the the the, the, the golden era. He was the second king. Saul was the first king. But he was the king during the golden era when the land really got uh, enlarged. David fought a lot of wars. He was a, he was a good tactical uh, king and fighter, really. And uh, the land got very large. It was as big as it ever was under King David. And that was one of the reasons why he couldn't build the temple in the end, right? Why wasn't he allowed to build the temple? Because he had blood on his hands. He wanted to build the temple in the worst way. He had uh, taken the city of uh, the Jebusites and uh, it was kind of a strategic move because, you know, here's the north up here and here's the south down here and the Jebusites was kind of right in the middle. And he conquered that city and he wanted to build a temple there um, on Mount Zion, but God said, no, uh, your son Solomon will build that temple. You've got too much blood on your hands. So go ahead and read those other ones in your homework. We make you work here. And uh, you'll, you'll know some of the key people in the Bible, which many of them you've already named. So no big surprises, but just helps to be reminded. Now if you turn to the next page, we're going to do just a little review on some key events from the Bible. So at your table, brainstorm for a minute on some key events in the Bible. One, two, three. Uh, let's hear some key events from the Bible. Creation. Creation. And oftentimes related to that was the fall. The fall. fall. Very good. Creation and fall. What else? Adam, like the resurrection. <laughs> the birth of Jesus. Is that what you said? Yep, the birth of Jesus. Grace is uh, more of a concept than maybe an event, but got a particular act of grace. And specifically, maybe that's more of a theological concept than an event. I'm looking for events here. Exodus. Crucifixion. Exodus. The crucifixion. The flood. The flood. The doubts, like of Peter. The ascension. Or the baptism of Jesus and others. Yep. The ascension. The ascension of Jesus. Early Acts and late Luke. 
Did we say the birth of Jesus? We did, but you can say it again. That's okay. I don't hear that well sometimes, so say it again. We'll get reminded. Reminders are good. Pentecost. Pentecost. Very good. What's the most important event in the Old Testament? Creation. Nope. I mean, yes, but no. I think that when you think about the formation of the Old Testament, the most important event is the Exodus. Creation, yeah, we wouldn't be here if there wasn't creation, but I was, so that's the right answer too. But, um, let's go on and just read that real quick. Exodus 12, second book in the Bible, Exodus 12, 33 through 42. This was the normative event for Israel. This is what called them into being. You could argue that before this time, they really weren't Israel. They really weren't a nation. But the Exodus from Egypt. Exodus 12, 33 through 42. Would somebody read that? The Egyptians urged the people to hasten their departure from the land. And they said, we shall all be dead. So the people took their dough before it was leavened, with their kneading bowls wrapped up in their coats on their shoulders. The Israelites had done as Moses told them. They had asked the Egyptians for jewelry of gold, silver and gold, and for clothing. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they let them have what they asked. And so they plundered the Egyptians. The Israelites journeyed from Ramos to Sakah, about 600,000 men on foot, besides children. A mixed crowd also went up with them, and livestock in great numbers, both flocks and herds. They baked unleavened cakes on the dough of the dough that they had brought out of Egypt. It was not leavened because they were driven out of Egypt and could not wait, nor had they prepared any provisions for themselves. The time that the Israelites had lived in Egypt was 430 years. At the end of 430 years, on that very day, all the companies of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. That was for the Lord a night of vigil to bring them out of the land of Egypt. That same night is a vigil to be kept for the Lord by all the Israelites throughout their generations. Thank you. So much like we might tell stories of the Minutemen and Paul Revere's ride and, and, and those things become a part of our story, uh, at the heart of our story, um, this is the exodus for them. This was the beginning, really, of their nation. So go ahead and read those other key events in your homework and take a look at them. You've named most of them so far. And, uh, and we'll look at those next time, just to kind of review what you read. Ten key dates from the Bible. I always think it's good to put things in history, because uh, it's just a whole bunch of names and people and places. Do you feel like your Bible dates are pretty good in your head, or is that something you're really missing? Okay, well, that's th these two pages are for you. Uh, you notice that the Old Testament really covers close to 2,000 years. And we're going to look at those in a minute. But if you turn the page and look at the New Testament, it covers about 100 years. So it's much, much, much less time um, that's being covered. And the Old Testament, you can see why it'd be easy to get confused at times. Uh, ten key people. You can just go ahead and put a check mark by these if you want to. But ten key dates. Uh, really the call of Abraham and Sarah. Uh, very key dates, and as we read before, God was calling them in a particular way so that they could be a blessing to the whole world, right? Somehow God wanted to choose them to bless the whole world. Uh, another key date was Moses and the Exodus. It says right around 1300. That's pretty close. Probably about 1290. We can date that almost that closely. And the reason is because there was a pharaoh that was a big builder in Egypt. Remember his name? Ramses. Ramses. Very good. Yeah, Ramses. Ramses the second. And he was a builder. And you know the stories that are happening, of course, uh, they're being forced to build bricks. Sometimes they're being forced to build bricks without straw because they've done too much complaining, haven't they? They want to leave. And Pharaoh says no. And so Pharaoh Ramses the second is most likely uh, the Pharaoh that was present when the Israelites uh, left Egypt. So that's another key date, very important date. You can see Joshua judges some of those things. They're not as critical, but they're, they're certainly important to the story as well. I think another key date is the calling of King David, so I would put a check mark by that. 
David was the king during the Golden Era. Uh, I think that's when probably some of the first writings of the Bible were written down. They had oral tradition before this time, but they weren't a people that had a lot of writing utensils or even the ability to do a lot of writing, or you could argue uh, that had the need to write things down. They had an oral tradition. Uh, African tribes, you go there today, it's in their head, it's in their hearts, it's not necessarily on a piece of paper that they're carrying around with them, even to this day. But you get David, you get a court, you get court historians, uh, you get reporters around, and for a while you start writing things down, don't you? It becomes part of your tradition then in a different sort of way. So King David certainly uh, an important date uh, around the year 1000. And then you see King Solomon right after him, and that's the building of the temple. Certainly, very, very important date from the Bible. Uh, Solomon was uh, an important king in his own right, but the building of the temple and that cementing of a place uh, for the people to come and worship God was pivotal for their nation. They're still praying at the Wailing Wall, aren't they? Today, in Israel, for the Messiah to come, and for the temple to be rebuilt. Of course, there happens to be uh, there happens to be a, a mosque on that at this time, but they're still praying for that day to come, for that temple.